So 5.6 is just simply a bunch of example problems with regard to exponential growth and decay. So we'll be playing around with the equations. You'll understand, hopefully, coming out of it, uh, what kind of information we need in order to construct an exponential function. Um, here we take a look at some examples showing the wide range of applications of exponential functions. So this first one is a, a they call it the rabbit epidemic, but bottom line is it applies to most every uh, population growth problem that you can have um, if, if the population is growing exponentially. Uh, typically it does. Uh, we've seen bacteria, we've seen other things, uh, and rabbits are often used as well because of this particular real-life history thing. In 1859, Thomas Austin released 24 abbots on, uh, onto his farm in Western Australia in order to have a small population to hunt. He didn't realize the population would flourish having no natural predators. So uh, these rabbits were not indigenous to Australia, and boom, here you go. This happens all the time all over the world. Uh, it's happening in the Everglades right now with uh, pythons. Pythons don't have any natural predators, so there are 20-foot pythons fly, uh, going all over the place and eating rodents and eating deer and all kinds of things, even eating the alligators in the Everglades. So they tell us that he started out with 24 rabbits. He has a growth factor of 2.5 every six months. So if we think about the equation, it's going to be still of the form uh, y equals c times a to the x, where c is our starting amount. And of course, that starting amount is that 24 rabbits. And A is our factor. And they did give us a factor of 2.5. So in this case, it's a growth factor. How do I know that? Remember, if my factor is greater than 1, it's going to be a growth factor. If it's less than 1, it's going to be a um, decreasing factor. Decay factor, I couldn't find the word for whatever reason, maybe because I'm old. So in this case, it's 2.5. And the T, or in this case, the X, which we can turn into a T, is number of six-month periods, okay, or six-month intervals, whichever word you prefer. So intervals or periods or whatnot. So it's not every minute, it's not every year, it's every six months that we multiply by 2.5, okay? So we're gonna construct an equation for the number of rabbits, r as a function of the number of six month time periods, t. So we're gonna use r and t instead of y and x that have, that have passed since Thomas Austin first released the rabbits, okay? So how do we do that? So we're just gonna construct the equation first and they've given us, given us all the information. So we're gonna have r equals some starting amount times a to the t, where t is six, number of six month periods, r is the population of rabbits. So once we've put in the information, we get 24. This is our growth factor of 2.5, and there's our equation, so that's part a. Part b, I know this looks weird because I'm writing the a's and b's to the right, but because I, I jammed that over there. So. Create three tables, one of the number of rabbits as a function of six month time periods, one as a number of rabbits uh, as a function of number of months, m, and a number of years, x. So we're gonna have to convert this growth factor to address the um, time factor, t, so that I have one a formula that's in months rather than six month periods, and one that's years instead of six month periods. So, okay. This one here. Okay. And then we're going to do this. Why doesn't he do this more often? It looks so much nicer. Yeah, it does. Sorry. <laughs> so this is going to be the number of months. This is going to be the number of six-month periods. And this is going to be the number of years. And that would be Y. Number of years. Okay? And this is going to be R, our output. So let's say that six months went by. And so t is equal to 1. And so how many rabbits would I have? Well, 2.5 to the 1, right? Because this is going to be 24 times 2.5. If I put 0 up here, we're going to have 24 times 2.5 to the 0. And that's going to equal 24, right? That's month 0. That's year 0. 
if after six months I have one, that's going to be a one time to the 2.5. So I get 24 times 2.5, right? And so 24 times 2.5 is going to be some number that somebody's already calculated, but for whatever reason, I'm coming here 24 times 2.5. Okay, so that's 60. Right? Now, if I go for two six month periods, that's going to be 24 times 2.5 to the sixth to the second because it's two six month periods and that's going to be 2.5 squared so that's going to be 2.5 squared times 24 can I do this oops that's just wrong I keep getting uncover this so uh, 2.5 squared enter what? 2.5, I guess I didn't hit the squared part. And then multiply that times 24. So it's going to be more than 60. It's going to be more than 120 as well. So that's 150, right? They want us to build a table all the way through. So if I had years, this would be a half, right? Half a year. And then this would be one year. And we don't need to put all these little numbers in here. It's not useful. Okay? And we're not going to put all the numbers in here. That's not so useful as well. But this is going to be if six months were entered, because one six-month period is six months, and two six-month periods is going to be 12 months. So in other words, if I enter 12 in for x, I should still get 150. So this tells us what these functions should look like once I get done. Now, what did they actually ask us to do? Create three tables, one for those other six-month time periods, one a function of months for a number of years, and show how you find the new growth factor for when changing time units. So we need to do that. And I don't know what happened there, but okay. So we're gonna have to show that work. So I'm gonna slide up to get some more space, and then I'll slide back over to figure these two equations out, all right? So we can figure out for months. So how do we adjust that? Y equals 24 times 2.5 to the right now we have to the t but if i have to enter in we've done this a couple times already but if i have to enter in um six in for t but not really trying to enter in for t i'm trying to enter it in for m for months so if i enter in oh they had uh they i just realized they had x here sorry okay um when i enter in six months T should end up being 1. And that's poorly written. When I put in M equals 6, this should result in my T equaling 1, which means that if I enter 6 N for M, it better turn into the number 1 for T. So in place of T, I'm going to put in M over 6. If I put 1 in for 6, it'll turn into 1, 6. But if I put 6 in for 6, it'll be 1, which is exactly what I need it to be, so that when I enter 6, it's equivalent to 1, giving me this 60. Okay? So my formula for a month looks like this. Y, I'm sorry, R equals 24, 2.5 to the M over 6. Now we're going to do something with that in a sec. I will do it now. So really, we could leave it like this, but the problem asked us to adjust the growth factor. Right? It says show how you find the new growth factor when changing time limits. So we really want to split this exponent into two components so that actually looks like this 24 2.5 raised to the 1 6th all of that raised to the m because when I multiply the m times the 1 6th I'll get this which is equivalent to the capital T so how do I figure this out now I take 2.5 and raise it to the 1 6th um, so this becomes 
my equation then becomes r equals 24 times not 2.5 because we want a new growth factor, right? So I have to turn to the calculator and do the following, 2.5 raised to the 1 divided by 6. Now again, if you have the other uh, older operating system, you need to put parentheses around this 1 sixth, all right? And so I get 1.16, and we're going to round it to the five decimal places because that looks like possibly the cleanest. What the heck is going around with this red stuff over here? Oh, well. I didn't notice that before. 1.16499 to the M. So that's how we can get rid of the 1 sixth and get a growth factor. Now, how are we doing this for years? So my yearly equation looks like this. Let's go back to blue and go r equals 24 raised to the 2.5. Now, we don't know what the exponent's going to be, but remember, if I put in 1 for years, if I put 1 in for years, so x equals 1, then what should come out is t equals 2. So that means I probably have to multiply this times 2. So in other words, 2 times x is equal to t. So this 2 to the x, if I put 1 in for one annual period, it's going to mathematically function as if I put a 2 in for t. So if I then do the same thing we did up here, we're going to take this 2.5. Let's do it in a different color. Hey, let's go hot pink. Um, we're going to split this up to be 24 times the quantity 2. Point, or the quantity 2.5 raised to the 2. All of that raised to the x, and then I'll take 24 and I'll take 2.5 and square it, and that'll be raised to the x. So 2.5 squared is going to be 6.25, I do believe. Six point two five. Okay, and so this is rabbit population for years, where x equals years, and this is where m equals months, number of months, number of years, and of course we had our original, which was r equals twenty four two point five to the t, which is t in six month periods or the number of six month intervals all right so that was part b <laughs> so what does part c ask us to do we might have to scroll back up but part c asks us to do the following construct equivalent equations for the number of rabbits r as a function of the number of months which we did and as a function of the number of years we did all that okay in 1926, so 1859 to 1926, even after various measures were taken to reduce the size of the population, this is a footnote telling us what the, probably explaining what they tried, there were estimated, an estimated 10 billion rabbits. Using a calculator, estimate how many years your model predicts it would take to reach 10 billion rabbits. Now we could choose any of the three functions that we want, but since they are asking for how many years your model predicts, maybe we should use that function, which is the hot pink one. So we're going to use r equals 24, 6.25 to the x, where x is in x equals number of years after, what was it, 1859, when the dope brought the rabbits to, I don't know if he was a dope, I'm being mean, sorry. Um, r equals 24. Uh, s oh wait, why am I writing that down? We want to know how we get the 10, mil 10 billion, 10 billion. So that's, remember, that's a million, that's a billion. So it's 10 times 10 to the ninth equals 24, 6.25 to the X. Now how do we solve that? Um, we're going to divide by 24, oops. And uh, 10 times 10 to the ninth divided by 24. What did they say? 
using a calculator estimate. Okay, so we're just going to use the calculator because this algebra we're not quite ready yet because we don't have logarithms. So we're not going to do this algebra work. We're going to type. We're going to use the calculator. Now there are a couple different ways to use the calculator to do this. I would suggest that you can graph it. And so we're going to go into y equals, and we're going to type in. Um, Mm, we can't type in y equals. Yeah, we can. We can type in y equals. We're going to go 24. 24 times 6.25 raised to the x. Wow. And so we're going to get a graph. Okay? So what happens in your calculator, you probably know this, I don't know. When you type this in there, it generates, it generates a table of data. When you hit graph, it's just plotting those points kind of stupidly. It's just plotting those points. But those points already exist inside the calculator. So we're going to go two ways to do this. You can go second. You can go to graph um, and then do some tracing. But I would say you're, you're going to have to change your window and all this kind of blah, blah, blah. I would say let's go to the table. And this might be painful too because we're going to have some gigantic value, 10 billion. And we're going to have to get the 10 billion here. Ah, uh, it's not too bad. Now remember how to read this read this screen. It's 3.49 times 10. E to the eighth is 3.49 times 10 to the eighth. So this is 3.49 times 10 to the eighth. So we didn't quite get there. We're trying to get to this number, right? So after nine years. We get nine years, we get that many. After 10 years, we have this many rabbits, 2.18 times 10 to the ninth. Now, is that quite, uh, we didn't quite get to the, the requisite amount, which was 10 billion rabbits. We have 2.18 billion rabbits. So that was after 10 years. After 11 years, so after 11 years, we're going to get to 1.4 times 10 to the tenth. So somewhere between after the 10th year started and in and uh, before we get to the 11th year so I would suggest that the answer is somewhere in the 10th year in or during the 10th year okay so let's go check our answers we know that the initial values of it is we get that formula we did this thing to get 6.25 and we did this thing to get 1.165. What do we have? 1.16 and I didn't round it to 5, right? Yeah, 5 would have been a nice rounding as well. Um, there are our tables. I didn't quite make it that way because I didn't care about the numbers in between. I was trying to make sure that we understood, you guys understood, how these three exponents are related so we could figure out what this would have been and also what this would have been okay that's when i that's why i built my table this way i didn't worry so much about the numbers in between okay uh and there's that footnote here's the rest of the problem uh the initial value here are our equations that's we got those using the calculator we get for 10 uh, they just wanted you to substitute numbers in until you got there so at 10, we get, as I said, 2.18. They also get 2.18. And they get to 13 per something billion. That's rounded 1.4 times 10 to the 10th. And so the number of rabbits reaches 10 billion after almost 11 years. Almost 11 years? Oh, yeah, because, oh, you know, this is, this is 14 times 10 to the 9th, which is 14 billion. So I disagree with their answer for some reason. Uh, reaches 10 billion ra oh after almost 11 years so in other words after 10 years <laughs> after 10 years is the same as almost 11 <laughs> so yeah whatever uh, 10 uh, we could figure out how exactly to do that if we had logarithms but we're not gonna worry about that so much not, not today okay example two China's one-child policy China's one-child policy introduced in 1979 and implemented in the 1980s was a response to China's uh, concerns with the population growing too fast. Uh, it has to do with cultural things. Uh, boys were favored over girls because girls would cost the family money because they were expected to give a dowry once you were married off, the, when the daughter was married to the male. And so you didn't want to be burdened with the dowry. You wanted a boy 
So um, this happens later. So before 1979, people would just have children, hoping to have boys, but that's okay if they had girls, not a big deal. But once there was a limit to one child per family because the population was growing too quickly, what ended up happening was a whole bunch of girls were being, uh, how to say this nicely, maybe not nicely, it's just not a nice thing that occurred because of cultural differences, they tossed them aside. So there's all these orphaned little girls that families didn't want, unfortunately because they couldn't afford the burden. I'm sure the wealthy didn't have a problem with it. In 2010, the 30th anniversary of the first significant implementation of a policy, um, China's population was approximately 1.3 billion. So the goal was to reduce the population to 700 million by 2050. <laughs> and that didn't work. Even though China's population grew over these 30 years, in 2009, its growth rate was, its rate of growth, don't be confused with growth rate, no, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Growth rate or rate of growth is the same. Don't be confused that that's the growth factor, okay? You can always tell because it's typically represented as a percentage if it's a rate. So the growth rate was 0.494%, and the population was expected to inevitably begin to decline in the near future. Assume that China's population will start to decline at a rate of 0.5% per year, decline at a rate of 0.5% per year in 2010, Will this rate be sufficient to meet the original goal? So 2050, they want to have 700 million. So let's build uh, an exponential decay model. Remember, we still have this, generally speaking, except now A is less than 1, which means A is going to be fractional. Remember that if I had a decay rate, that's equal to my decay rate tells me that it's 1 minus R, and so my decay factor is equal to 1 minus r. Or remember I said always think of it as a equals 1 plus r and if you're de if you're decaying your r is negative it is negative for decay. And r is positive for growth. So if I remember that instead of two different formulas, I can figure out the following. Let's do this over again here. So um, y equals c times a to the x, and a is equal to 1 minus 0.5%, which of course we don't do math with percentages. So we convert that to a decimal relationship of the percentage. And that's going to be my decay factor. So y equals c times the quantity 1 minus 0 0.005x, or t, or whatever. They'll probably use t and p for population and time, or y for years, or whatever. Um, now we have to figure out what the starting value is. I assume in 2010 we had 1.3 billion, 1.3 billion, okay? Which means that y equals, and we're trying to get to 700 million by 2050. Okay, so we don't want to represent this in billions or I'm gonna get some decimal value that might not be easy to represent. So let's say we want to get 700 million. 700 million is 700 times 10 to the sixth, correct? So let's write this number, which is 1.3 billion. And let's write it as 1300 times 10 to the six. So we're gonna say 1300 million, okay? So it's gonna be y equals 1300 million in 2010 times 1, point, 1 minus 0 0.005 to the x. X is in years, y is the population. Okay, so let's condense this. Y equals 1300, my initial population. One, I'm sorry. And that's going to be 0 0.995 to the x. <clears throat> and we want to get to 2050. So if 2010 is equal to x equals zero, right? 
because if I get put zero in for X right now, I'll get 1.3 billion or 1,300 million. So 2010 is zero, which means 2050 is what number? What do we put in for X? That would be 40. So we're going to put in 1,300, 0 0.995 to the 40. So I'm going to pull the calculator out for that. I just spilled a bunch of junk on that. Okay, uh, calculator, calculator, calculator. Um, quit. And clear, and we got uh, 1,300 times 0 0.995, didn't register my nine, raise to the 40. Now again, think about it as, oops, I lost the 1,300. Second, insert, I need another zero because I pushed the zeros too fast. <clears throat> so uh, remember, an exponential function is repeated multiplication. So I'm going to take 1,300, let's say this was a 1, I'm going to take 1,300 multiply it times 0 0.995. So my 1,300 gets smaller. Then on the next one, I'm going to take the resulting number and multiply it times 0 0.995 again. Then that resulting number was smaller. I'm going to take it for round three and sub multiply it times 0 0.9995 again. So I'm going to do that 40 times. This is the condensed way to write, hey, do this 40 times. And we get 1063.816 million and we wanted to get down to 700 million. So it was effective in reducing the, the population, but not nearly effective enough. We lost, we reduced it strictly by approximately 240 million people, and we needed a, a drop of 600 million. So we didn't even reduce it by half the amount of people we need to reduce it by. So let's see what the answer is here. If the decay rate is that, we get the same formula, right? They did all the same work. I explained it. And they get um, 1,064 million people. And that was the number we got as well. So we get the same issue. We have the same problem. So the decay rate is not enough to reduce the population to 700 million people. We want, If we wanted to, we could figure out what we needed the decay rate to be in order to um, get there. Uh, but we'd also have to be working from 2020, and I don't know what the current population is. Maybe it's a little less than it, than it was expecting, and the, and the decay factor was better than, the decay rate was better than they anticipated. So let's go back and look at doubling times and half-lives again with a couple of problems. Okay, so this is example three, part A. And they say in each, each, each situation, construct an exponential function where t equals the number of years. Now, uh, they want us to learn how to do this rule of 70 thing. The rule of 70 has to do with accounting, and it's, as far as I know, it's the only time we use percentages and do math with percentages. So when we get to that example, I'm just going to skip that because I don't want to teach you that. Um, if you're going to go into accounting, you go figure it out. If you want to Google it and look up rule of 70 or read below, that's perfectly fine. Um, it, it might be somewhat helpful in your real life as you make some money and be, make a living, but I'm just not going to address it now. I don't use it at all. I'm financially found, uh, sound and just never worried about it. So, uh, A, so they want us to write the equation, uh, which means we need to find the growth factor because we're going to have something that looks like this, right? And we have a starting amount of 1,000, for at least for example 3 part A. And we know that the doubling time is three years. So my population goes from 1,000 to 2,000. It doubles in three years, in a three-year period. So let's do this. Put 2,000 in for my final population. Put 1,000 in for my starting amount. And let's say we don't know my growth factor, because I don't. I know my growth, I know that it's gonna double in three years, 
but I really want to know what this number is going to be. So what I can do is I can do the following. I'm sorry. Why did I write one third in there? I can do the following. Let's do that again. So I know that I can do the following. At t equals 3, my population is going to double, go from 1,000 to 2,000. And then I can do some math here. Let's divide both sides by 1,000. This equals 1. This equals 2. And I get this. So how can I get rid of this 3? Well, raise it to the 1 third, or take the cube root. But we want to think about it this way. OK? So now this, when I multiply those, they equal 1. So I get a on the right-hand side. And the left-hand side, I get 2 to the 1 third. And so my growth factor is 2 to the 1 third. Let's substitute that back into my equation. I get y equals 1,000 times a to the 1 third to the t. Whether they want us to multiply that out, I'm sorry, that's not a, that's 2. If they wanted us to multiply that out, we'd have to do that in the calculator. And we're going to do, we'll do it just for com completeness. 2 to the 1 divided by 3. We rec recall, don't forget your uh, parentheses if you have the older version of the operating system. And let's go to 2, 6, t. So part B is the half-life is five years. So that means if I have seven, I'm going to go down to 3.5 in five years. My, pop, my population or number or mass or whatever is going to cut in half. They tell me my initial qual quantity is 50. Uh, so that means I'm going to go down to 25 in five years. So with the generic version of this equaling that I'm going to have 50, I'm sorry, I'm going to have 25 starting out with 50 a to the t. But to go from 50 down to 25, that will take five years. Now I can solve for a by dividing both sides by 50, and I get 1 half equals a to the 5. Do the same thing here. I'm going to raise it to the 1 fifth. Why? Because these two will equal 1 and give me a on the right hand side. But I also must raise this to the 1 fifth on the left, which means I have 1 half to the 1 fifth, which means my formula looks like y equals 50 times 1 half to the 1 fifth, all of that raised to the t. Now I'm sure they would want us to. We did it above. We're going to simplify this or condense this down to a single growth factor instead of a growth factor with an exponent and go one fifth, I'm sorry, one half raised to the one fifth and get 0. Point, let's go 87 to the t. And so that's my function for part b. And so let's just go check. They go through the same work here, so the 2 to the 1 third, 2 to the 1 third, and they didn't, they didn't simplify it, they wrote it that way. Good, because I actually prefer it that way. I prefer it that way, they just wrote this as um, equals 1,000 times 2 to the t over 3. I prefer it that way because it's more accurate than this. We trimmed some numbers off, right? We rounded. And so based on that, I suspect that the answer for B is going to be the following, 50, 1 half to the T over 5. You can use 0.5. It's not a problem. Okay? And that's what they did there. All right? And so there's a little blue box here. Uh, I'm sorry, blue framed box because it's not the same, quite the same. So this is just going through a procedure. It's not a theorem or an idea or a definition or anything. So it's just going through the procedure of how to find the growth factor. Uh, and you should probably know how to do that, okay? Because it's going to come up in the project. Half-life, radioactive decay. So example four. This video is already longer than I want it to be, but let's see how long this takes. I can trim it if, it, if it's a problem, if it's too much of a problem, I should say. So example four. 
Uh, one of the toxic radioactive byproducts of nuclear fission is strontium-90. A nuclear accident like the one in Chernobyl can raise blah, 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 strontium-90. The clouds deposit the strontium-90 onto vegetation eaten by cows, and humans ingest the strontium-90. But strontium-90 has a half-life, so its radioactivity reduces over X number of years. And this says that um, the half-life for strontium-90 is 28 years. I think that's what it says. The strontium-90 then replaces calcium in bones, causing cancer and birth defects. Strontium-90 is particularly insidious because it has a half-life of approximately 28 years. So its radioactivity doesn't reduce by one half until 28 years later. So in other words, it lurks around. Um, that means that every 28 years, about half of the existing strontium-90 has decayed into a non-toxic stable zirconium-90, but the other half still remains. So it's still pretty bad. So A, construct a model for the decay of 100 milligrams of strontium-90 as a function of 28-year time periods. So what do we got? We have 100 milligrams, so C, my starting amount, is 100 milligrams. And so I'm talking about half-life, so this is going to go from 100 down to 50 in 28 years. Okay, so that means Y equals 100 A to the T but if I input the information, I go from 50, I go down to 50 from 100 as t equals 28. So that means I divide both sides by 100, get one half. By the way, if we're talking about half-life, do you realize this is always going to be one half? So that's a thing that I can always just trick it into. I can always really just start there. One half equals a to the whatever the half-life is to figure out what the growth factor is. Then when I raise this to the 28, 128th, I get that, and so I get A is equal to 1 half to the 128th. And so my equation looks like this, 100 milligrams or micrograms, what was it, milligrams? Milligrams times 1 half to the T over 28. So that's part A. Construct a new model that describes the decay as a function of the number of years. Now, oh, this is actually part B. The function of a 28 time period would have looked like this. Y equals 100 to the 1 half to the, let's say, big T. Big T meaning uh, 28, tw each 28 year interval. And so that's that. And there's our new one. They multiplied it out. It would have been this t to the uh, 1 half raised to the t over 28. And so that's what I have. Then they did that multiplying through. They put, took 1 fifth and raised it to the 1 28th to get 0.976. OK? Did they ask for the decay, fact, uh, decay rate? No. Here, they're talking about decay rate, so you would they didn't ask for it, but we certainly could talk about it. Um, generate a corresponding table and graph. I didn't do that. The graph you could just put into Desmos and graph it. The, the t decay factor is 0.976, so the decay rate is 1 minus that, so you're losing 2.4% every year. Okay, and there's that. All right. Identifying doubling time or half-life. Assuming, R, assuming T is in years, identify the doubling time or half-life for each of the following exponential functions. So this would be doubling time, because notice that that's a 2. And the years would be 12. It'll take 12 years if T is in years. Yep, and it tells that T is in years right there. This is half-life, and the, the half-life is not in 4. It's in 1 fourth. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's in one. It's one fourth. So we don't have to worry about this five times ten to the sixth. That's our starting amount. So recall that if I have t to the two to the t over seventeen, the doubling time is seventeen years. Okay. So if we want, we can think of it as um, k t is equal to the doubling time, or half life, either or. Let's call it I for interval. But if this is 1 17th, 
I want to... I'm just going to delete that. So the, I, if you haven't seen the, maybe you've seen the pattern. When I have something like this one, which is like T over 12, it ends up being that 12 is the doubling time or the half-life um, or the half-life in t, meaning in the same time period. So if this t was in months, this would be 12 months. If t was in years, this would be 12 years, okay? So if that, say, told us in the beginning that t is in years, so that's gonna, our doubling time for part a is 12 years. Now if I look at, so in other words, t over k, let's say k is my um, doubling or half, right? Half-life, doubling time or half-life, right? So if I get this weird one, like B, uh, which is 4T, 4T, remember, it's one, it's T over K, so this is in the bottom. So to get 4T, I have to divide that by 1 fourth, right? T over 1 divided by 1 fourth is equal to T times 4 over 1 which is 4t. So to figure out what the number is in the denominator, I have to invert this. So it's 1 fourth. So my decay, decay, my half-life, I know it's uh, half-life because that's decay, so it's 1 fourth of a year, so three months. Um, and part C, that's half, so this is decay, so my half-life is 1 third. One third of a year or four months. One fourth of a year. You could do all some kinds of tables and things. I don't know if they do that. Yeah. So, blah, 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 quantity. I don't know what they're doing with this 65 thing. So, the quantity is half the initial value. Oh, it's half of 65. The half life is one third year or four months. Oh, I saw. I see what they did. Okay, they just in, they just in, input a t value that is uh, a value that'll make the uh, exponent one, and then it can figure out um, one times that. So they were kind of guessing and checking, but they kind of knew that. Let's put t as in one fourth.